Good morning, friends. I am Professor Pavan Nargoda, working as assistant professor in civil engineering department in DWPD project manager in Kolhapur. Here to present a video on remote sensing. Friends, remote sensing is one of the important part from the syllabus point of view. So we will discuss the key points of remote sensing. This is our unit number six, modern methods of surveying. These are the outlines of presentation. First one is the definition of remote sensing. Second one is the principle of remote sensing. Third one is the types of remote sensing. Fourth key point is the interaction of electromagnetic wave with the matter. Fifth point is the applications of remote sensing in civil engineering. And lastly, the limitations of remote sensing. Friends, remote sensing by the definition is a technology of acquiring information about the Earth's surface without being in contact with it. It is a method of collecting and interpreting information about the terrain and other objects from a distance without being in physical contact with the object. Human sight is one of the best examples of remote sensing in its basic form. As we can see that human eye collects the information about the various objects and human brain interprets the information about the objects. Remote sensing involves the use of electromagnetic energy. On in the PPT, you can see an electromagnetic spectrum, which is one of the form of energy which moves from velocity of light. It moves in a harmonic pattern consisting of sinusoidal waves. Light is a particular form of electromagnetic radiation that can be sensed by a human eye. Electromagnetic energy can be detected only when it interacts with the matter. Electromagnetic energy moves in a systematic pattern and it behaves as through it considered Though it considered consists of many individual bodies called photons. The photons have particle-like properties such as energy and momentum. Electromagnetic wave can be described in basic three parameters. First, with its velocity. Second, with its wavelength, and third, with the frequency. The PPT shows one of the parameters of electromagnetic spectrum, which is the wavelength. It starts from 10 less to minus 12 to 10 less to positive 3 in terms of uh, micrometers. 
Now you can see that radio waves starting from 10 raised to plus 3 to almost 10 raised to minus 1. From 10 raised to minus 1 to 10 raised to minus 4, those waves are called as microwaves. These microwaves can be detected by the radar system. 10 raised to minus 3 to 10 raised to minus 6, it is called as infrared waves. From 10 raised to almost minus 6 to 10 raised to minus 8, those waves are called as ultraviolet waves. 10 raised to minus 8 to 10 raised to minus 6, it is called as X rays and gamma rays. The wavelengths corresponding to atmospheric windows are used in remote sensing to acquire good images. Now, next part is how electromagnetic wave interact with the matter. When electromagnetic radiation strikes the matter or the earth's surface, it is called as incident radiation. That matter may be solid, liquid or in a gaseous form. When electromagnetic radiation strikes the matter, there is interaction between the two. This interaction may change various characteristics of incident radiation, such as intensity, direction, wavelength, polarization, and phase. The interaction of electromagnetic radiation with the matter usually consisting of following five modes. First is transmission. Second is absorption. Third is emission. Fourth is scattering. And fifth one is reflection. Let us start from the source, electromagnetic source. The incident energy will strike on the matter. Some part may get transmitted through the matter. So transmission is that component of incident radiation which passes through the matter. The velocity of electromagnetic radiation changes in the matter depending upon the density of medium. The change in the velocity is measured in terms of index of refraction. Second one absorption. One ray interacts with the matter, some of the rays or the energy can be absorbed by the matter or a surface. So absorption is that component of incident radiation which is absorbed by the matter. This absorbed energy will be ultimately used in heating of the matter. Third one is emission. Emission of the energy 
is emitted by the matter or the earth surface. It usually occurs at longer wavelengths. It depends upon characteristics or the structure of the matter and the temperature. Fourth is the scattering. If the matter having rough surfaces or it may have some roughnesses comparable to the wavelengths of incident energy, it may cause the scattering. Light waves are scattered in the atmosphere by molecules and particles which have sizes comparable to the dimensions of wavelength of light. Lastly, the reflection.